Learn how you can build easy APIs with Azure SQL Database. In addition, learn how you can use things like Azure Automation, Logic Apps, and all about the Data API Builder this week on Data Exposed MVP Edition. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed MVP Edition. Today, I'm joined once again by Joey, though it's been a while. Joey, thanks so much for coming on Data Exposed MVP Edition. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure, Anna. Uh, I'm a principal consultant at Denature and Associates Consulting. We do a lot of work with a variety of customers with Azure, SQL, the cloud in general, uh, kind of all sorts of architectural database all sorts of fun things. Uh, and we kind of have a cool demo to show today. Awesome, yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, the title of this episode you submitted was Easy APIs with Azure SQL Database. I don't know a ton of what that means. I have not seen this demo, so I'm just super excited. But before we get into it, I want to share, ask, like, what led you to creating this or what's the scenario? Like, how did you come up with this? So this is a really funny story. Uh, I, was, I was cruising the Azure subreddit one day in January and someone was asking about how to like write a PowerShell script to, or or not necessarily a PowerShell script, but how to get a list of all the Azure VM sizes. So I thought, hmm, I'm bored. It's cold outside. Uh, I fired up Visual Studio Code and started writing some PowerShell. Eventually, I got that to work, and then I wanted to persist it. And then I talked to Davide uh, Mori on the uh, on the SQL team about Data API Builder. And we were able to build a really cool app uh, without a whole lot of effort. I'm not a developer. Uh, and I wanted to walk through that and share it with folks today. Awesome. Cool. I love the Data API Builder. We've been hearing a lot of excitement about it. So it's cool to hear that you were able to easily kind of pick it up and get started. Um, let's take a look. OK, cool. So first, we're going to start out here. Uh, this is Azure Automation. For those of you who are not familiar, uh, this isn't really uh, super fancy, uh, but it's just a way to to connect and run PowerShell in Azure, in this case, on a schedule. So we run this weekly. And uh, I'm going to kind of talk you through a little bit of the code I wrote here. Uh, just on line 29 through 31, uh, I'm resizing an Azure SQL database. And we'll explain why after we're done. Uh, this is a cost man strictly a cost management operation. Uh, this is our DCAC trial sub. So I'm increasing the size for data processing. And then eventually, we'll shrink it back down to, to serve data. But what we're doing here is going against the Azure resource provider, uh, starting on line 35, and getting uh, for each region in Azure, because each region doesn't necessarily have the same VMs available. So we're getting the name of the VM size, the CPU, the memory and gigabytes, the IOPS, which is you know, of interest to DBAs, number of network cards, number of disks, uh, and then finally the region name, a couple other attributes. And then we're writing those into an Azure Blob storage account. So we get one file for each region. Uh, this will matter eventually, I promise. I'll show you. Uh, so I started down this path, and I got this working, and I read all this data. And then I wrote it into an Azure SQL database, because I'm a database person. We write things into databases so we can mess with them. Uh, one last bit I want to show you here. I write, finally, when this is complete, because it loops through each region one by one. I write a file uh, that's just called a status uh, that processing is done. And I'll explain why that matters in a minute. We then have an Azure SQL database. Uh, and we have a procedure. And I did a lot of terrible things in this procedure. And <laughs> DBAs, I just want to tell you, forgive me. Uh, it was the only <laughs> real way to do this. Uh, so those files, that cloud I put is stored as JSON data. So here we have, uh, I'm running a cursor to loop through each of those files for each region. Uh, and then I'm using dynamic SQL. This is not my favorite combination of technologies. Uh, but it was either do it this way or do it in PowerShell, which effectively would have been using a cursor. Uh, so what this does, that data is in JSON. It slices it and dices it and makes it into tabular data. And then ingests it into the database, loops through each region, and then completes it. Uh, we have a holding table that gets uh, truncated, and we insert into our data. So this brings us to the Data API Builder. So we have data in a table, but we don't have it in a way that we can view it. So I'm on my Mac here, and here I'm in the Data API Builder directory. 
all I have to do in order to to build my data API app, and, and I'm going to do this locally just to kind of show you the demo, is I just have to add a connection string. Cycle through my history here a second. So I'm just adding a connection string here. You can see my username. Uh, don't use the local one, but uh, I use Azure Active Directory for this in real. In real. And then I'm also adding an, a VM size. So this uh, VM sizes thing is my API object, and that's just my table name. So I'll Control C there, and then we'll look at this dab config.json file. And we can see here that my entity is called DB, DBO VM sizes, mm -hmm. and I can connect to it anonymously. You can also configure security. Uh, right now, it's just anonymous. And I can go ahead and run this app locally on my machine. So I'm going to do that by typing dab start. And here we can see it's starting in my console. And I'm going to navigate over to a tool called Postman. Um, and this is just a tool that lets you explore APIs. And I'm going to make a call here. And we can see that we're getting data back. I can do a bunch of things to filter this. It's just coming back in JSON raw from the API. Uh, kind of in any order. After we talk about how we built the app, I'm going to show you a better way to do this using GraphQL, because one of the cool things about the Data API Builder is it lets you interrogate the data either just using REST or GraphQL. And GraphQL feels a little closer to SQL to me, so I'm a little more, more comfortable with it. The rest of the components to this app are kind of interesting. So I run this PowerShell runbook as an automation job. It runs on a schedule. So here I can click, I can see it runs weekly. The next runs on the 18th of May. Uh, but that's kind of neither here nor there. I needed a way to trigger this. And so when I wanted to do that, I used an Azure Logic app. And this is a little bit overly complicated, I'll admit, but it was kind of a neat demo. So what this does is when that status blob that I mentioned earlier gets updated, so when the, job, the automation mm -hmm. job is finished running, it triggers the stored procedure that I showed you, which ingests the data. Finally, this calls another automation job called cleanup that reduces the size of the Azure SQL database back to its normal size and then deletes all those blob files. So I'm not spending any more money than I need to. So this is kind of cost-effective cleanup. Finally, to, to show this to the internet, I built a web app. So I have a I deployed uh, the Data API Builder as a Docker container. I deployed that to the Azure Container Registry. And then I built a web app using that. And here you can see it's a, a very small, basic web app. Uh, but it's hosted. And, and here's the GraphQL endpoint. Uh, we even have custom DMS. So I can see VM sizes, dcac.com slash GraphQL. And this gets me this GraphQL endpoint where I can query the data. And here I see I'm querying VM sizes for VMs that have greater than 16 CPUs, memory greater than or equal to 512 gig, more than 80,000 IOPS, and in this case, the West US 2 region. And I can see what my result set is. I can see how long my query took. So if I run this again, it took 152 milliseconds, I think, because it's probably cached on the server. So it's a very nice run. Uh, but this all kind of brings this app together. So we're using a whole lot of components in Azure uh, to do this, uh, and we're bringing it nice and tightly together, and it's, it's something we can showcase uh, to users, and it makes for a nice demo. Nice. This is super cool. I love how you use a bunch of different technologies, and then it all came together with this nice way, an easy way to kind of start to use uh, GraphQL, get your toes into it. So I see a lot of spaces where a viewer might be like, okay, not only am I going to learn all these cool technologies, but I'm going to use all these different things. A um, couple questions for you. One, um, maybe this is a little bit of a complicated workflow, or maybe it's just my first time seeing it. Um, what do you think? Why did you build it like this? <laughs> well, it started out as a, a Reddit post. And so then I was like, hey, I can do a presentation on this. I could have done everything in the automation runbook in like a single runbook where I do all that cleanup. Uh, but this lets me demo a, a bunch of different functionality in Azure to, to kind of highlight like logic apps are kind of a neat way and a lot of people aren't too familiar with them, uh, especially for admins who don't have a lot of code experience, but they want to 
automate some workflows in their environment. So it was kind of a nice way to showcase that. Yeah, definitely. And personally, working with Logic Apps, they're super easy to use. Uh, so that's also a nice plug. But you're, I guess what you're saying is the Logic App maybe wasn't totally needed for this scenario. The Logic App's probably a little bit extraneous here. Uh, <laughs> In, in a lot of the, the demos that the data API team use are using uh, static web apps. And I just had more fun using a regular web app because uh, it was where my comfort level was. Yeah, sure. Awesome. That's cool. Um, you mentioned earlier that you can access this anonymously, or that's how you set it up. Uh, if you wanted to add security, like how does that work between these services? So the, I'm going to break this question down into two parts. The security between the two services is really awesome. I'm taking advantage of managed identity in Azure. Uh, so it's very easy to use least privileges. So for example, that logic app can connect to the database, but it only has permission to execute that one stored procedure. Likewise, the web app can connect to the database, but only to read that single table. The second part of that question, how would we add authentication to this? And that would require a little bit more work. We'd have to have, uh, we'd have to include some authentication libraries uh, into the Docker container just to present an AAD auth screen. However, since this is all in Azure, it would be fairly straightforward to make it uh, AAD authentication just to hit this GraphQL endpoint. Cool, awesome. This has been great, Joey. Like really interesting way and fun way to just get started and play with Data API Builder. Uh, for folks maybe getting started with any of these technologies, because you showed quite a few, like any final tips or tricks? Um, all I can say is I think play around a lot. Uh, it's really important, I feel like, for even database professionals to get comfortable with Azure automation, uh, writing that PowerShell and being able to interact with the Azure control plane is definitely something, even just as a database professional, is important to have as a skill. And then something like Logic Apps, you may not think about it every day, but it can really help you automate some, some kind of basic workflows, even things like if you had to do database maintenance across a pool of Azure SQL databases, that can be something that's really easy to do. And then finally, the Data API Builder is kind of an amazing tool. Uh, speaking as somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience building APIs myself, I'm floored at how quickly I can build it. It's like three lines of code or four if you count the Git clone statement, uh, and then you're up and running at least locally on my machine. So it's it's a really nice solution, and I'm I've been really impressed with what the team built. Awesome, cool. Well, Joey, thanks so much again for coming on Data Exposed MVP Edition. To our viewers, if you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think. Try out all these cool technologies. We'll put some links in the description for you to learn more, and we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.